stand before you and to minister to you tonight the word of God. I want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So for those of you who are joining us, welcome, and it's indeed a pleasure. So um, this evening, I'd like to share with you on the topic, Refreshed by God. Refreshed by God. So before we begin to teach or before we begin to share the word of God, I'd like for us to pause for a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercy, and we thank you for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you, O oh God, for your word. Your word is precious. Your word gives us life, and we thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the Holy Spirit, who's our teacher and our guide. And we thank you, O oh God, that you are open our ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that as we do your word, that we, we will be blessed in what we do and in what we say. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to share with you tonight on the topic, Refreshed by God. And my text is going to be taken from Isaiah chapter 44 and verses 1 through 3. In the New King James, it reads, Yet... Hear now, O Jacob, my servant and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground, and I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. In Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 7, it says, The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly, and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. Here the promise is given to us by God himself that we are chosen. Here the promise is given by God himself, the God who made us. Here the promise is given the God that says that he will help us. And so this is the God that we serve. He's saying, do not be afraid. He's saying, fear not. Why should we not be afraid? Here is a promise that God has given to us. He says in his word that he will pour water on him who is thirsty. And it didn't stop there. He says that he will pour floods on the dry ground. God's word compares to rain or water. They both give us life. Water is essential and it's nourishing. Without rain or without water, we cannot survive. If we neglect the intake of God's word, then we experience a drought of fresh insight. We experience a drought of love, care, and grace. The beautiful thing about God's word is that it infuses us with strength. The wonderful thing about God's word is that it strengthens us and it gives us hope. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 32 in verse 2 in the New King James Version, it says, let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. Here is the promise. God promises us water. Water will be poured out on those who are thirsty. Are you thirsty for God? Are you hungry for God? Do you have that longing, that desire to see the move of God, a fresh move of God? Water is absolutely necessary to life. Nothing living, whether animal or plant life, can exist without water. No spiritual life can exist without God's grace. God's grace is needed for the maintenance of the quickened spirit. So what are the benefits of water? Let's take a look at water in the natural. What are the benefits of water to our natural bodies? Well, when we aren't well hydrated, our organs are left thirsty. Water, it energizes the muscles. Water, it improves our mental health. We're looking at water in the natural sense. Water also balances the hormones. And of course, water keeps our skin youthful. So the promise of pouring out of the spirit and of blessing, God is saying that I will pour water. And when we think about God, we know that he's not a man, he's not lying. So if he's promising that he's going to pour out water, that's exactly what he will do for us. It says, I will pour water. The words floods, rivers, streams, and waters are often used in scriptures, especially in Isaiah, and it indicates plenteous divine blessings, particularly the abundant influences of the Holy Spirit, our precious Holy Spirit, the gift of God. I love the illustrating of the word picture where it says that God would bestow blessings upon us. God will bestow his blessings upon us and that will signal his marvelous goodness, as if floods of water were being poured on a ground that's dry or parched or desolate. It means here that the spiritual influences, which would be poured out on the afflicted, the desolate, and comfortless, it would be like rain poured on the thirsty earth. This is a beautiful picture that the Word of God is painting for us. He says that he shall come down like the rain. Can you just picture that in your mind? Allow the Holy Spirit to paint that picture in your heart. He will come down like the rain upon the grass and as showers that water the earth. Here is a promise again, and I'm going to keep repeating this throughout this message. God will pour water on him who is thirsty. Are you thirsty today? God will pour his water, he will pour his spirit upon you. The promise is that flood, he will pour floods on the dry ground. He will pour his spirit not only on you, but he will also pour his spirit on your descendants. His blessing also upon your children. God will pour out his spirit upon those who are thirsty, upon those who desire him, upon those who yearn for him. Praise God. As we think about the word thirsty, let me, let's, I'll just break this down for you, um, the word def, um, thirsty. It says thirsty, it means having a strong desire for something. When you're thirsty, you're eager, you're longing, there's a yearning in your heart. You're desiring something. And what I'm talking about tonight is desiring more of God, desiring the power, desiring the presence of God in our lives. The word of God tells us that he will pour out his spirit. He will pour out his blessings upon us. All the blessings of God's covenant, both spiritual and temporal, these are the promised spirit. His gifts and his graces it can be compared to water, that refreshing drink of water. 
When we think of it, we know that water, it purifies us. Water, it softens us. Water makes us fruitful. The Spirit of God will allow us to be fruitful and productive. The Spirit of God or the blessings of God is refreshing in its nature. It gets rid of this thirst and it gives us a real pleasure and Let's take a look at the woman at the well. So we're going to take a look at an, an encounter of an individual who came in contact with Jesus Christ. And I love the way um, it's written in the message. So I will uh, read from the message um, for you, St. John chapter 4. It says, Jesus realized that the Pharisees were keeping count of the baptisms that he and John performed, although his disciples, not Jesus, did the actual baptizing. They had posted the score that Jesus was ahead, turning him and John into rivals into the eyes of the people. So Jesus left the Judean countryside and went back to Galilee. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sychar, a Samaritan village that bordered the field Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taking aback, asked, how can you, a Jew, asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. When I read that part of the word of God, that really encouraged my heart because here Jesus was asking the woman at the well if, or she, he was saying to her, if you knew the generosity of God, if you knew who I am, if you knew the person who was talking to you, then you'd be asking for a drink. And here the, the word of God is saying, I would give you fresh living water. Back in the village, she told the people, come see a man who knew all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves. Jesus' encounter with this woman was life transforming. Jesus spoke to her about her personal life. Jesus answered her spiritual questions. And Jesus treated her with such a level of dignity that had really been afforded to her. In verse 10, it says, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am. So that acts, it caused me to ask the question, what does the word generous mean? So the word generous means showing a readiness to give more of something. So if you knew the generosity of God, how God is kind, giving of himself, being generous as money or time, generous being, showing kindness, kindness towards others. Generous means being liberal, lavish, bountiful, plenteous. This is the God that we serve. Generosity, the quality or fact of being kind. How generous is the God that we serve? He is very generous. When we look at the word of God in Psalm 103, it tells us, forget not his benefits. What are those benefits that our generous God lavishes on us? It says here, he forgives all of our iniquities. He heals all of our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. 
He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. This is the generous God that we serve. The generous God that we serve, that we serve, he satisfies our mouth with good things. The generous God that we serve, he renews us. He renews our youth like that of the eagle. The generous God that we serve, his mercies are new every morning. Praise God. The generous God that we serve, he's merciful towards us. Thank you, Jesus. The generous God that we serve, he is gracious and he is kind. The generous God that we serve in verse 9, it tells us that he will not always strive with us and that his anger will not always, it will not last forever. Praise the Lord. The generous God that we serve, it talks about his love. It speaks of his mercy. Look at this picture that the word of God paints for us. It says, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. This is the generous God that we serve. This is the generous God who offers us a drink of living water. This is the generous God who loves us. He says in his word, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you. God loves you today he, with an everlasting love. In John chapter 7 and verse 37, we have an invitation that's worth accepting. Jesus Christ, he said, if anyone thirst, that includes you, that includes you, that includes you. He says, if anyone thirst, let him come to me. And not just come to me, there's more. He says, come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. This is the generous God that we serve. He promises that he will refresh our lives. In Psalm 36, verses 7 through 9, it says, How precious, how precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men, therefore, we trust in God. We trust under the shadow of his wings. They are abundantly satisfied. Here the word of God is telling us that he satisfies us. He says that he abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink from the water, from the river of your pleasures. For with you, for with God is the fountain of life. With God is the fountain of life. He's our source. He's a living source. Praise God. So as God pours out his spirit upon us, we will experience spiritual recovery and we will experience kingdom exploits. The spirit is, um, is compared to water because without him, all things decay. Without him, we perish. Thank God for his spirit. Thank God for the outpouring of his spirit. Thank God for the outpouring of his grace upon our lives. The Lord promises that he will pour out his spirit. This gift would have the same effect as pouring water on dry ground. This spirit, this effect, it will be just as water being poured on dry ground. Praise the Lord. It says that it would bring refreshment and new life. This empowerment will, and will refresh our life. This empowerment will strengthen us. It would bring us refreshment. It will bring us new life. It will be a new spiritual attitude. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that this is our year of spiritual recovery. We thank you, Lord, for the rain. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for pouring out your spirit upon us. Praise God. It says, moreover, I will give you a new heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 
the promise of the Father is that he will give us a new heart. The God who loves you so much, the God who loves you so much, he promises that he will give us, he will give you a new heart. And it doesn't stop there, my friends. He says that he will put his spirit within us. Hallelujah. There's nothing like being in the presence of God, knowing that he has lavished his spirit upon us and that new spirit, that this spirit is within us. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27, it says, I will put my spirit within you. Glory to God. The spirit of God that strengthens us. The spirit of God that quickens us. He tells us that he will put his spirit within you and he will cause you to walk in his statutes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Having the divine nature of God within us that enables us, that it empowers us to live a victorious life. Glory to God. We have been poured up out of his spirit on our lives, in our lives, and it em em emboldens us, it empowers us, it quickens us to live a life of victory. Hallelujah. What a gracious promise. What a gracious promise that we have in the word of God, that this promise is not only for us, but it's also for our children. Glory to God. Here the thirsty soul, the soul that's longing for God, is promised an abundant supply because that's the God we serve. We serve a God who gives. He gives of himself. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon those who have a desire for God's presence and a power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to quote from um, Benny Hinn in his book, Welcome Holy Spirit, he says, that longing, that longing for the things of God is very important. In fact, it is a key, it's the first key when it comes to experiencing the work of the Holy Spirit. We must have, we must have that passion for his power. And as we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit, he will pour his presence out upon thirsty souls. Glory to God. He will pour out his presence upon you. Hallelujah. Here is the promise of our loving father that your soul is thirsty. It doesn't have to stay like that because there is a fountain. Glory to God. There is a river, hallelujah, that doesn't run dry. And as you come to God, as you drink of him, your soul will be satisfied. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The presence of God is real. The presence of God is real. Hallelujah. It's so real that broken lives are healed because of his presence. Hallelujah. Broken lives are changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Broken lives are healed because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, sitting at your home, sitting in the car, wherever you are, Know that the water is flowing towards you. Know that the stream is flowing towards you. Know that God loves you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter who have cast you aside. It doesn't matter who have rejected you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who have spoken ill of you. Let me tell you about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the woman at the well, I too had an experience with God. I too had an encounter with God. Hallelujah. God's love reached out to me. Hallelujah. And he has given me a drink. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's given me a drink whereby my desire is only to pursue the things of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Here is the promise, and I will keep saying this. Here is the promise of the Holy Spirit. I will pour water on him who is thirsty. So I pause to ask you the question, are you thirsty? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a time when I thought that if I had a certain job, that would satisfy me. There was a time where I thought, oh, if I knew this person, that would satisfy me. But there's nothing and there's no one who can satisfy you like God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Here is a precious promise that I'll keep repeating because I want the Holy Spirit to engrave it upon your hearts. I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Hallelujah. These floods are the promises poured into the soul. Glory to God. The love of God poured into your soul. Hallelujah. The love of God refreshes. Hallelujah. The love of God purifies. Hallelujah. The love of God strengthens. The love of God keeps. Hallelujah. The love of God provides. Hallelujah. The love of God refreshes. This is the living water that I'm offering to you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so you ask the question, how do we come to him? How do we come to him and drink? It's only the Lord Jesus who can quench your inner thirst. Only God, it's only God who is the living water. He wants us to drink of him so that our thirst can be quenched. Hallelujah. Not only so that your soul can be quenched, but so that you have something to offer someone else. Hallelujah. When we look at the story with the woman at the well, she went back to her village. She went back to her family. She went back to the community and she said, come see a man. And that's what I'm doing for you as well. Telling you, come see a man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So not only does God satisfy you, but you're also able to tell someone about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So how do you come to him and drink? Isaiah chapter 12, 3 through 6 says, Therefore, hallelujah, the soul that is refreshed has joy. So it says, therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, you too can say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention his name. His name is exalted. Verse 5 says, sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Verse 6, cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. So how do we drink of the living water? We can start drinking the living water by thanking the Lord. Hallelujah. It is healthy. It is healthy to give thanks. It is healthy for us to be thankful and to practice thanking the Lord all the time. And you know what? We all know it's easy to say thank you when things are going well. But in the storms of life, when you're facing your challenges, can we still say thank you, Lord? Yes, 
we can still thank God because our focus is not on our situation, but our focus, our eyes are on the Lord. And that's why we're able to thank God even when you're going through adverse situations because your eyes are not focused on what's going on around you. Your eyes are on God, the giver of life. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Begin to give God thanks. Begin your day. Begin each day by thanking God. Allow thanksgiving to be the posture of your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Why give thanks? Psalm 92 tells us it is good. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It is good to sing praises to God's name. Hallelujah. It is good to declare God's loving kindness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can declare the goodness of God. You can declare the mercies of God. You can declare all that the Lord has done for you. Tell someone of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 124 says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, you too can say that. If it wasn't for the Lord who was on your side, what would happen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says, our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why should we give thanks? Psalm 147 tells us, it says, praise the Lord, for it is good, hallelujah, it is good to sing praises to our God. Why should we praise God? It is good, it is pleasant, hallelujah. So when we say thank you, Jesus, when we say thank you, Lord, we are saying and we are doing something that's good, hallelujah. It goes on to say that praise is Beautiful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And the God that we serve, he beautifies us with his salvation. Glory to God. How do we drink of the living water? We make his deeds known. What God has done for you, don't keep it to yourself. Tell someone. Tell someone what God has done for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How do we drink of this living water? Remind people that Jesus is exalted. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How do we drink? How do we drink of the living water? By singing psalms. Hallelujah. By singing hymns. By singing spiritual songs. Glory to God. Opening our mouth and singing hymns to the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. As we sing, hallelujah, as we make melody in our hearts, the fountain begins to well up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll start to sing of God's goodness. You'll start to sing about his grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here the word of God tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, it says, but be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The same Spirit that's within us, the same Spirit that's within us as we sing and make melody in our hearts, it strengthens us. So it says, be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Your heart will be blessed. Your heart will be refreshed as you sing about God's goodness. And the more that we sing our hearts to the Lord, the more that will be watered, my friends. Hallelujah. The more that we sing of God's goodness, the more our hearts will be refreshed. The more our hearts will be watered. Glory to God. And so in conclusion, I will say this verse to you again. As it's written in Isaiah chapter 44, I will pour water. Hallelujah. Please embrace that promise, knowing that it's the promise of the Father. This, this is God's promise towards you today, that he will pour water on you. 
Hallelujah. And floods on the dry ground. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In St. John chapter 7 and verse 37 through 38, it says, Jesus cried out. He stood and he cried out, if anyone thirst. Hallelujah. Does that include you? Yes, it does. It includes you, my friend. It includes you. If anyone thirst, let him come to me. And don't just come. Hallelujah. Come for fellowship. Hallelujah. It says, come and drink. If he believes in me, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This living water is available for you today. Hallelujah. And I will say, if you knew the generosity of God, hallelujah. In St. John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you knew the generosity of God, think about that. Think about his generosity. Think about how kind he is. And as you reflect on that, you would be asking him for a drink. Hallelujah. And the promise is given that God will give you fresh and living water. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. This living water is an overflowing source. This living water is an ever-present source. Can you just think about it? Here I have my bottle of water, and once this is finished, that's it. I may have to go and get another bottle of water. But there will be within us a fountain of living water that it doesn't go dry. So you're at home, the living water is there welling up within you. You're in your workplace, the living water of God is there refreshing you, giving you insight, giving you wisdom in how to operate in the workplace. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, in the marketplace, the Spirit of God, the well of God is within us, satisfying us. Glory to God. And so I'll close by saying that we do need, we do need the power of his life flowing within us. Not only do we need to access this well, we also need to release. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The way in which God refreshes your spirit, the way in which God strengthens you, you're able to give that uh, refreshment or refreshing, that encouraging that encouragement to someone. Like the woman at the well, when Jesus opened up the innermost secrets of her heart, she knew, she knew, glory to God, that she had come in contact with substance of heaven. She knew that this person was no ordinary person. When she did, there was a fresh invigoration in her spirit. She came alive. And today, you also can come alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And so this is what I want to offer to you today. This promise of the Father that he will pour out his spirit upon you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, that you have promised us that you will pour out your spirit upon us. We thank you, God, for the fulfillment of that promise. We thank you, God, that within us there is that well, and we thank you, Father. We thank you, God, for times of refreshing in your presence. We thank you, Father, for your word, we thank you, God, that your word is quick and it's powerful. We thank you, God, that your word is working mightily in the hearts of your children. 
We thank you, O Father. We thank you, O God, for pouring your spirit upon us, O God. And we thank you that we'll thrive in your presence. We thank you, O God. We thank you, Father. We bless and we honor your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So I would like to extend that invitation to you. If you have never um, given your heart to the Lord, then he most definitely would like to have a personal relationship with you. Like the woman at the well, she came in contact with Jesus and her life was never the same. Today, if you give your heart to the Lord, if you open your heart to him, you will never be the same. He will change your life. He will make you new. He'll give you a new heart. He will put his spirit within you. And so if this is your first time saying yes to the Lord, and even if it's not your first time, perhaps you had a relationship with the Lord before, but for some reason you walked away, God loves you too. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he is married to the backslider. God wants to have that relationship with you. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so here the promise is given to you that as you open your heart to the Lord, as you open your heart to the Lord, as, he say, as you say yes to him, he will take you just as you are and fellowship with you. And so um, the information is on the screen. If you would love for us to be able to share some information with you about how you can have a dynamite relationship with God, please contact the church office. Someone will be able to minister to you. Please call us at 718-994-0514. Or you may email us at ChristAliveBX at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put salvation, and we will definitely be in, in touch with you. We'll send you some materials. We will guide you into your spiritual walk with the Lord. Amen. At this time, it's an honor to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering. God is such a gracious God. He's a loving God. He has provided for us the resources that we need. He has given us jobs and he has blessed us. And it's such an honor to sow into the kingdom of God. It's such an honor to sow into the kingdom of God. The word of God tells us that God, he loves. He loves a cheerful giver. I just want to read a portion of scripture to you. In 2 Corinthians, uh, let's see. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, verse 6, But this I say, he who, spares, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, who is able to make all grace abound toward you, and that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance of every good work, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase, and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Praise God. So um, as you give, um, please make your checks payable to uh, Christ Alive Christian Center. And th there are multiple ways in which you can give. The information is on the screen about the different ways that you can give. And we know that as you give, the Lord will bless you. 
Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for an opportunity to sow into your kingdom. Just as how, Father, you have sowed your love into our hearts, we thank you, Father, that it's such an honor to give to further your work here on earth. And so, Father, we thank you for blessing. We thank you, God, for increasing us more and more, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I would also like to share with you some announcements. Um, God is so good. God is so good. And we do have our weekly services. So um, please join us if you can. Um, online, we do have our Sunday services online at 8 a. I'm sorry, our Sunday services online um, at 10.30 a.m., also in person, we have our 8 a.m. service in person only. And as a reminder, we do have our um, kids' church and kinder church ministry every Thursday, every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. The Zoom login information is available on the events page of our website, ChristAlive.org. It's been a pleasure. Um, fellowshipping with you this evening. And so please remember that you can always join us in line, online or you may join us in person. May God continue to bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and may he give you peace. God bless you. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.